Pichu might be cute, but it is a terrible Pokemon. Of all the Pokemon in Legends Arceus, Pichu has the lowest health stat and the fourth lowest defense. So it's incredibly frail and its other stats don't make up for that, with Pichu having the fifth lowest stat total in the entire game. So I wanted to see if just one little Pichu could beat all of Pokemon Legends Arceus by itself. Could Pichu go all the way against some of the toughest opponents in the entire series? And does Pichu have a hidden dark side? Well, let's find out. Pichu and I tumble from the sky. We meet Professor Laverton, who's instantly seduced by Pichu's cuteness. Well, no one with a Pokemon this cute could possibly be evil. Exactly! <laughs> we successfully infiltrated the village and apparently agreed to help fill the Pokedex. Uh, sure, but my Pokedex is literally just gonna be cute Pichu picks. Anyway, I wanna know which Pichu you think is cutest. Like for Ukulele Pichu, subscribe for Manga Pichu, or comment for Hoenn Pichu. That night, a lightning bolt mysteriously struck that would bring great terror to the people of Hisui, but that's probably not important. Anyway, the professor offers me one of three starters, but these Pokemon all suffer from the same problem. They're not Pichu. With my true starter secured, now we could really begin the challenge. Our first battle is against Volo, whose only Pokemon is a little egg, so this should be easy, right? Well, despite this being the battle that is meant to be impossible to lose, I nearly lost. A Thundershock does laughable damage to Togepi before it fires back with a tackle, taking more than half of my health. I definitely would have lost on the next turn if Pichu didn't clutch up and paralyze Togepi with its next Thundershock. The paralysis bought me one more turn and I was able to just scrape by with the win. That fight is meant to be the easiest in the entire game and we still almost lost. Straight away, I thought there was no way that Pichu would be able to beat full teams of powerful Pokemon, but I wanted to see just how far we could go. Our trial to join the Survey Corps requires us to catch a Bidoof, but this one's a little big, so let's find a smaller one. Yeah, that's much better. Now, I will need to catch other Pokemon to progress the story, but I can only use my Pichu in battle. This Shinx has an aggressive disposition. Could you already tell that? I mean, yeah, it does sound pretty mad. We catch the Shinx, and Akari gives us her best rendition of a YouTube React thumbnail. I'm still curious why you came falling from the sky like you did. Oh, you'll find out soon enough. What was that? Ah, uh, nothing. Never mind. Since our Pichu is so weak, I electrocuted some Starly until we were at level 10. Luckily, Silene thought that our Pichu dex was cute enough to warrant a rank up to the first star. The next day, Akari challenges us to a battle, which is fine by me. I wonder what Pokemon she has. Oh dear god, it's Pichu's nemesis! Mr. I'm so good just because I'm the Pokemon mascot. Well, we'll see about that. It was a battle of the electric mice. Problem is, Pikachu definitely has us covered in the stat department. Akari immediately used a quick attack, which almost killed Pichu in one shot. But in response, Pichu charged up a powerful attack and... So I got slapped around. It's only the second battle and we've already lost. Cool. But I wasn't going to give up. I rebooted the game and this time challenged Akari with my Pichu at level 15. The start of the fight goes the same as last time, with Pikachu landing a huge quick attack. However, at level 14, Pichu masters the move quick attack. This lets me use it as a strong style or agile style move. So this time, I use an agile quick attack, which gives me a second consecutive turn, which I then use to land one more quick attack, giving us the win over Hisui's second best electric mouse. The professor said that Pokemon have these things called types. Oh geez, I lost to someone who doesn't even know that the type chart exists? That's embarrassing. How's the plan going, Keegan? Smooth so far. Continue pretending that we just met until the time is right. From here, the game does not get any easier because as soon as we cross this bridge, Mai forces us into a battle with Munchlax. This thing is a behemoth. It's super bulky and has a solid attack stat that can abuse poor Pichu's low defense. But I got insanely lucky here. I knew I couldn't strong arm Munchlax, so instead, paralyzed it with Thunder Wave. This means that each turn, there's a chance that Munchlax won't be able to move. And that's exactly what happened. So this gave me time to land an agile quick attack before Munchlax was paralyzed again. This means I can land two Thunder Shocks, bringing Munchlax to low HP. Then it was paralyzed for a third turn in a row. Pichu really is blessed. One more Thunder Shock got Munchlax into the red, but then this happened. Practical nuke incoming! Thank <laughs> you. 
Even with all that luck, all it took was a single tackle from Munchlax to punt my Pichu into next week. So I raised Pichu to level 18 and gave it a power boost by throwing a bunch of grit dust at it before returning to rematch my. I still need a lot of luck with Munchlax being paralyzed, but the difference is that this time I can survive at least one tackle. And with Munchlax being paralyzed on the following turn, I can land two more Thundershocks to finally give us the win. Oh, he looks so sad. I kind of feel bad now. You see, I need someone to deal with an alpha Pokemon causing trouble. And you came to the guy with just a Pichu? Of course, it is the cutest Pokemon after all. I think I'm in love. Fine, I'll do it. So after Pichu harvested a snack, we made our way up the mountain, avoiding every Geodude at all costs because ground type Pokemon are like the plague in this challenge. But once I made it to Deer Track Heights, we confronted Alpha Cricketune. Be careful, Keegan. Size is a potent weapon. Oh, it's okay. I think Pichu is almost the same size as Cricketune. And how did that work out? Terribly. Cricketoon slapped Pichu around within just two turns. So I rematched Cricketoon with a few extra levels on Pichu. The fight looked to be going the same as last time, with Pichu taking big damage on turn one before paralyzing Cricketoon. But this time, Cricketoon spared me and used False Swipe, leaving me on only one HP. Now I had two turns up my sleeve to land two Thundershocks. This wasn't enough to get the job done, but Cricketoon was paralyzed on the following turn, so Pichu charged up one last Thundershock finally taking out the moustached menace. Oh, great weird ear, share your wisdom with us. Pichu is cute and my antlers are shaped like a Pichu. Whoa, that's good wisdom. I follow a god of time. Yeah, well, I follow a god of space. Oh yeah, well, I follow a god of cuteness. Turns out that the noble Cleavor is enraged and is mauling people for a laugh. So we had a meeting to decide the best way of dealing with it. What do you intend to do about the noble Cleavor, Commander? Well, I was thinking we send the new kid and see what happens. Agreed? 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 What? Great, majority agrees. Go get him, kid. If Pichu and I were going to take on a noble lord, I at least wanted to look the part. So I picked up a new outfit and now I really look like a Pichu fan. I made my way towards Cleavor's shine and oh, look at this smug prick. Thinks it's so good just because he's the Pokemon mascot. I waited until the Pikachu was asleep and then hit it with a surprise attack. That'll teach you who the cutest chew is. Uh, are you good, Pichu? Once we do reach the shrine, Warden Leanne tries to fight us off with his little ball of goo. Gumi is pretty weak though, and by pretty weak, I mean its stats are only 50% higher than Pichu's, but it's a physically frail Pokemon, so two quick attacks give us a quick win, which is really nice for a change. Irida turns up, and apparently Cleavor was enraged by a lightning strike. Crazy, right? Anyway, Pichu and I put on a concert for Weirdeer. Pichu's cuteness had won it over, and now we can travel on Weird Ear's back. Which is great, because it means Pichu can rest its little legs. Before we can take on Cleavor, Irida decides to test our strength, and this battle is not easy. Glaceon is our toughest opponent yet, with a total stat count that is more than double Pichu's. We do have the level advantage, but not by much. So my plan is to let RNGs Jesus take the wheel. I paralyzed Glaceon on turn one with Thunder Wave, and it was unable to move. I can then land a Thundershock, which really doesn't do much. A single quick attack from Glaceon is almost enough to finish Pichu, but Glaceon was paralyzed on the next turn. By using an agile style Thundershock, I get two turns in a row. So I followed it up with one more strong style Thundershock, hoping it would be enough to take Glaceon out, and it just fell short. With Glaceon on the brink of death, a Swift finished off our Pichu, and we'd clutched defeat from the jaws of victory. But that was close. It showed me that it was possible to beat Glaceon. We just needed to get lucky enough with paralysis turns. But I'm not exactly known for being lucky. And Glaceon slapped me around time and time again. But after a whole bunch of attempts, eventually the odds went my way. Because on this attempt, instead of leaving Glaceon with a tiny sliver of HP like earlier, this time I got a critical hit, meaning we had finally gotten past Irida's Glaceon. On. But the fact that I was already so reliant on luck this early in the run did not fill me with confidence. Now we were clear to take on Cleavor, the Lord of the Woods. Pichu was in pretty bad shape after getting slapped around by Glaceon, so I decided to take on Cleavor in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cleavor's attacks aren't too hard to dodge, so I was able to quickly bombard him with an artillery of bombs, calming down the giant bug. For our trouble, Irida gave us some berries. Lord Pichu is pleased with this offering. Our next mission brings us to the Crimson Mylands, an awful place with lots of stinky ground types. But before that, Akari stops us for a battle by the gate. Now she's got two Pokemon, and it's the first time that we're outnumbered. But that'll be the case for most of the run going forward. So how did this battle go? Not well. 
All it takes is a single Zen headbutt from Mime Jr. and Pichu is toast. Even at level 30, with some paralysis luck on my side, we still got decimated by a Mime Jr. And even on the off chance that I got lucky enough to get past Mime Jr., then Pikachu just instantly finishes me off with an agile and strong style quick attack. My odds of beating this challenge were starting to look very bleak. I needed a new plan. So this time, I upped my survey rank to 3 stars, which allows Pichu to be taught Iron Tail by the Move Tutor. I also replaced Thundershock with Thunderbolt to give us some extra firepower. Now I could get past Mime Jr. reliably with a Thunderbolt, but Pikachu could still easily clean me up afterwards. Even after raising Pichu to level 33 and peppering it with Grit Gravel, we were still getting screwed. Because even though I can now survive 2 attacks from Pikachu, Somehow, Akari's Pikachu gets to attack three times in a row. I hate you. All right, no more messing around. Once Pichu reaches level 35, we can take Mime Jr. down with one quick attack. Because quick attack raises my movement speed, it means Pikachu won't be able to use attacks to get three consecutive attacks. So I finally get a chance to attack Pikachu and it takes a strong style Swift to send it to its grave. Sweet, sweet revenge. I was ecstatic to be done with that fight, but little did I know an even bigger threat was just around the corner. For now though, it's onwards to the Crimson Mire Lands. After a short trip across the swamp, we reach the ruins where we meet Kalaba and what I can only assume is a Hisuian Bellsprout. Apparently an artifact from the temple was stolen which we'll have to help retrieve. But before we can try, Volo emerges and challenges us to a rematch. Except now he's got an extra Pokemon lurking in the deep. So not only does Volo have two Pokemon now, but one of them is a ground type. Bad news. I can take Togepi out with Thunderbolt, no problem. But then Gibble the Conqueror emerges, and it only takes one Agile style Bulldoze to finish Pichu. So how are we going to deal with this one? Well, my plan involves taking advantage of the new battle system and the order that Pokemon move. See, if I use an Agile style Quick Attack against Togepi, I'll get to move twice in a row on the next turn. So even though Togepi recovers all the damage I did with its Draining Kiss, I can still take it out with one Thunderbolt. Difference is, with this method, now I get to take a swing at Gibble with my second attack. Before it even has a chance to blink, I can land a big Iron Tail to take Gibble out in one shot. In the end, that wasn't too bad. We then quickly track down the criminals, who were lured out by the cuteness of Pichu. Their names are Dumb, Dumber, and Dumbest. We do have to battle them, but they only use a single Toxicroak. So, one strong style Thunderbolt makes light work, electrocuting their frog. We return the stolen relic, and Kalaba deciphers the ancient prophecy. It says... Keegan is about to be mauled by a bear for hours. No, don't worry, dear. That could be any Keegan. Oh, wait, no. It's definitely you. Help. Ursa Luna, or as it's known in this run, the Grim Reaper. Ursa Luna has a stat total of 550, equivalent to two and a half Pichus. It has the third highest attack stat in the entire game, and it's incredibly bulky. On top of all of that, Ursa Luna is a ground type, meaning I can't use my strong electric attacks, nor can I paralyze it with Thunder Wave. This is by far Pichu's toughest opponent yet. I got slapped, destroyed, spat on, teabagged, stepped on, and downright embarrassed. I clearly stood no chance as things were, so I needed a new plan. First, I went and raised my survey rank to 6 stars. This gives me some special extra moves at the tutor, most important of which is Play Rough, a fairy type move that has a chance to lower the opponent's attack. After sprinkling Pichu with some Grit Gravel, I thought, now I might have a chance. If I can get an attack drop with Play Rough, maybe I could survive an attack from Ursa Luna. But then I was reminded just how weak our Pichu is, because even with a huge level advantage and an attack drop, we still fall to a single bulldoze. I was starting to feel hopeless. Even at level 55, we weren't faring much better, despite being more than double the level of Ursa Luna, until this attempt. On this particular run, I got an attack drop with Play Rough, and then Ursa Luna did something strange. It used an Agile style bulldoze. The attack drop from Play Rough, combined with the power reduction from Agile style, meant that Pichu was actually able to survive a bulldoze. Ursa Luna then gets another attack immediately and used Baby Doll Eyes to lower my offense. By using Quick Attack, I can give myself two attacks in a row and a chance at victory. Quick Attack barely does anything, but on the next turn, I charge up a strong style Iron Tail and the rest is history. Ah! We were so close to greatness. To put this into perspective, I'd already spent hours on this one fight by now. So to come this close and still fail was gut-wrenching. But now I knew it was possible, not easy, 
but possible. Failure after failure, hour after hour, I could simply not hold all these L's. But then, this attempt happened. Turn 1. Playrough does decent damage and gets the attack drop. Ursaluna then goes for the only move combination that I survive. An agile bulldoze into a baby doll eyes. Pause. Did you notice anything change? Mid-fight, during Ursaluna's turn, the overworld weather changed to fog, and fog makes moves more likely to miss, even those with an accuracy of 100 like bulldoze. On the next turn, I connect with an agile iron tail, but miss the strong style iron tail afterwards. However, then a miracle happened, because Ursaluna missed its bulldoze. We know from past attempts that one iron tail won't be enough to get the KO, so I go for an agile quick attack first first for some small chip damage. On the next turn, it was all down to one last Iron Tail. And it connects! Just finishing Ursa Luna, and finally we'd slayed the giant bear. We won due to the weather, of all things, and it felt like the big man upstairs was really looking out for me. After hours of trying to beat that fight, the challenge was finally over, and... Uh, hello? That's not the end? You mean it gets way harder? Ah! Oh, Keegan, how did it all go with Ursa Luna? Don't ask. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, Kalaba, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't think that's going to fix her ankle. While it is true that there are tougher fights, after how strong we had to get to beat Ursa Luna, we're at a pretty high level for this point in the game. So, a short time later, we stormed the ridge where the noble Lilligant resides. Pichu was able to get the knockout with one super effective play rough, and I then smacked it with a few bombs, and before long, the second noble had been quelled. We then head back to report our heroics to Kamado. Excellent, but you have no connection to the lightning, right? Me? Come on, don't be ridiculous. Remember this, Pokemon are terrifying creatures. Oh, I know, Kamado. I know. Our next mission is to spread the cuteness of Pichu to the Cobalt Coastlands. As soon as we arrive, Irida stops us for a battle, and she uses two Pokemon at the same time. She gave me some trouble last time, but this time things went much smoother. On turn one, I immediately take care of Glaceon by sending 5,000 volts to its skull with a Thunderbolt. Eevee follows suit on the next turn, giving us an easy win. Ah, now I feel better. Uh, I did just electrocute your Pokemon. Should you really feel good? If Pichu really felt like it, he could electrocute every water Pokemon within a 10 mile radius if we thunderbolted the ocean right now. We then make our way up the cliff where we meet Polina. If you were to guess, which of these Growlithe would you say is the previous Lord's child? Ha, huh, I bet that's a trick question. You're the child of Arcanine, aren't you Polina? You're an idiot. After annoying Polina, our next stop is Iskan's house to see if he'll help us cross the ocean. He tells us to find a Dusclops, and on the way, I found this. But since this is a Pichu solo run, the only respectable option was to Thunderbolt the shiny Pokemon into oblivion. F's in the chat for shiny Mothum. Anyway, we grabbed the Dusclops for Iskan, but this really made me think. Does a Dusclops blink, or is it winking since it only has one eye? These are the things that keep me up at night. Dusclops adds its seven secret herbs and spices to the dish, and now we had a meal for Basca Legion. After we win over its heart through the power of song, now we can use it to cross the ocean. Wait. I've got it. Iskan is the child of Arcanine, isn't he? Never speak to me again. Dumb, dumber, and dumbest make a triumphant return and steal one of Polina's Growlithe. I don't really care, though. I mean, it's not my business. Oh, it's that guy with the Pikachu. Excuse me? What did you just call Pichu? Pikachu? How dare you? Leave them to me. Once we reach Fire Pit Island, we confront the Misfortune Sisters and have to take on all three of them back to back. This is usually one of the more challenging fights, but our Pichu is fully charged and ready. Clover's up first, and she lives up to her title of dumbest by throwing her Abomasnow out right next to Lava. Although, it's not around for too long, since Abomasnow falls to one strong style Iron Tail. Coin's Toxicroak is a case of deja vu, once again being taken out with a single Thunderbolt. Although Charm is easily the hardest of the three, boasting two Pokemon, including a Ground-type and a powerful Gengar. I have to take Rhydon out quickly, but luckily, it also has a secondary Rock-type. This means it's weak to Iron Tail, and one of these takes it out. Gengar then fires off two powerful attacks, doing huge damage, but Pichu clutches up and barely holds on. 
From here, one final strong style Iron Tail takes care of business. The little Growlithe evolves into a huge, towering Arcanine, and the Misfortune sisters run off scared. Personally, I think they were running away in fear of Pichu's power, but that's just me. We step up to face the new Noble Lord Arcanine, and this is one of the harder boss fights. Although, I've got a mighty Pichu on my side. He looks like he's about to be pushed into the lava, but just tanks a Raging Fury, before landing another Thunderbolt to give Arcanine a dose of shock therapy. From here, I dodge a few of Arcanine's attacks, and we play fetch with some bombs until Arcanine eventually calms down. Who's a good boy? Pichu's cuteness had saved the day once again, but there was still one mystery yet to be solved. Wait, I finally got it. Am I the child of Arcanine? Good job in the coastlands, Keegan. I just hope that Polina recovers quickly from that aneurysm you gave her. My next mission is in the Coronet Highlands, but before we can get there, Adaman forces us into a two-on-one battle. You might think this is easy since I have a 20 level advantage, but it's really not. Leafeon somehow manages to survive a strong style Iron Tail, and then Adamant's Pokemon both get two attacks each. They've gotta be hacking. Poor Pichu can't handle the onslaught and sadly falls. I tried a few different approaches, but nothing was working. Leafeon could take me out with a single Leaf Blade, so I got slapped around over and over again. So I had to go back to my old strategy of relying on paralysis. But this still isn't easy, because for this to work, I need Leafeon to be paralyzed for two turns in a row and to have a few things go my way. Which, knowing my luck, of course did not happen and I kept on losing to Adaman. Until my luck finally started to turn, because on this attempt, Leafeon was paralyzed on turn one and Eevee was just looking around, which is kind of funny to imagine. I missed my Iron Tail, but Leafeon was still paralyzed. We do get hit by Baby allies, which is annoying since this lowers Pichu's offense. On the next turn, I land an Agile Iron Tail this time, and hit the small chance for a defense drop on Leafeon. The luck keeps on coming, because Leafeon was still paralyzed for a third turn in a row. Eevee does land a few quick attacks, but at this range, and with the defense drop, one strong style Iron Tail can finish off Leafeon. Now Eevee gets two quick attacks, and I need to dodge a crit, which I luckily do with Pichu barely hanging on. But now it's my turn, and I can take care of Eevee with a Thunderbolt. Even with all that luck, I still barely managed to squeak out the win. I couldn't help but think that Pichu stood no chance against big teams of strong Pokemon. But with that, now we can team up with Ingo and head into the Coronet Highlands. You'll find all sorts of rock and ground type Pokemon here. Please, no more ground types. Spoiler, there were more ground types. While wandering through the mountains with Ingo, we come across Melly and his Skuntank. It's only a one-on-one, -on -one, but Skuntank is pretty bulky, so it does survive a Thunderbolt. Even with how frail my little Pichu is, he somehow survives a Poison Jab before finishing Skuntank off on the next turn. That was kinda close, but Melly will be back later on with a stronger team. Keegan, do you remember what you saw before you fell through the rift? Heaven, Volo. I saw heaven. Oh god, more bears! Run! There's an injured Bronzor that needs help, but since it's made of metal, it's basically a floating battery. So Pichu charges it back up with a Thunderbolt. Basic science. Problem solved. Before we can progress any further up the mountain, we'll have to defeat Ingo, and this guy is a problem. He carries three Pokemon that our little Pichu will need to solo. The worst part? His ace is a Gliscor, which, you guessed it, is a ground type. Beating three Pokemon is no easy feat, especially with a Pokemon as frail as Pichu. I can take out Ingo's Machoke with a single play rough, but then he follows up with his demonic Gliscor, who decimates me with a quick attack and mud bomb combo. It was clear that level 56 just wasn't going to cut it. But even after getting to level 65 and pelting my Pichu with Grit Rocks, it still wasn't enough. Pichu, no! Get down! I'll take the hit for you! But it wasn't enough, and Gliscor once again made light work of Pichu. New plan. I went and defeated a ton of alpha Pokemon, hoping to get a Seed of Mastery drop, which I got after about an hour. This lets me master the move Play Rough, so now I can use it either as an Agile or Strong Style move. But even by using an Agile Style Play Rough to knock out Ingo's Machoke, that still wasn't enough to help me survive against Gliscor. So, once reaching level 70, I decided to experiment and found something interesting. If I weaken Machoke with an Agile Thunderbolt, there's a chance that Ingo switches into Gliscor. This gives me a chance to attack Gliscor, which I haven't had in any attempts before this. Unfortunately, I did miss my attack and was promptly destroyed by Gliscor, but regardless, 
regardless, this gave me hope. I then proceeded to lose over and over again. Essentially, my plan was to have Ingo switch into Gliscor, hit it with a play rough, and land a small chance for an attack drop, which will hopefully allow Pikachu to survive long enough to remove Gliscor, as well as Ingo's other Pokemon. But after a huge string of losses, I raised Pichu to level 75, and then we had a crazy attempt. Turn 1, the Agile Thunderbolt onto Machoke does big damage and Ingo switches out into Gliscor. I land a play rough and don't get the attack drop, but Gliscor then hit the 15% chance to miss Mud Bomb. This means that Pichu can finish Gliscor on the next turn. All of a sudden, we only had to contend with Ingo's last two Pokemon and Pichu still has plenty of HP. But a huge double edge from Machoke brings Pichu to the brink of death, albeit taking itself out in the process due to recoil damage. It was all down to this, Pichu versus a ball of noodles. I charged up one final strong style Iron Tail and... No, 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 please! I'd been stuck on this fight for hours by now and was heartbroken to fall just short, but at least now I knew it was possible. So I kept on trying and still failed. But a short time later, the stars aligned. This fight went slightly differently than previous attempts because this time Machoke used a double edge on turn one and ended up taking itself out. I use a strong style Iron Tail onto Gliscor, which falls just short of getting the KO. But importantly, Gliscor missed another Mud Bomb. This means that on the next turn, I can knock it out with an agile quick attack. This is important because it means that I can get two consecutive attacks against Tangela by using another quick attack. The chip damage from this quick attack makes all the difference, and with my next attack, one strong style Iron Tail can remove Tangela and we'd finally beat Ingo. Our reward for winning is imprisonment in Sneasler's backpack while we get carried up the mountain. While confined, I realized that if we struggled that much against a team of three Pokemon, how would we ever stand a chance against a team of four or five or even eight? For now though, Melly's back and this hacker uses three Pokemon at the same time. You would expect this to be pretty hard, but since I had to get so strong to beat Ingo, this one really isn't too bad. His Skuntank is the biggest threat, so I use a strong style Thunder to take it down straight away. This leaves only the two minions, although I can still lose since I'm put to sleep and Pichu is really frail. But with a little luck, Pichu lands its attacks through drowsiness, with both of Melly's remaining Pokemon falling to a single Thunderbolt each quick and clean. Let's make one thing clear. I didn't lose. You may have won, but there's a difference. Uh, are you sure? That definitely sounds like something a loser would say. Shut up. Melly refuses to cooperate with calming down Electrode, but Kamado steps in and helps us out. Use your eyes, Melly. Haven't you looked at your frenzied lord? I see nothing but a Pokemon overcome with joy. Oh yeah, he's a real happy little fella. This is one of the harder boss fights because Electrode is running wild, flinging its balls everywhere. Pichu was able to take it down with two quick attacks in our first encounter, but was too weak to get the job done the second time around. This left it all up to me, but I dodged those giant balls with precision before slapping Electrode with enough bombs to help calm it down. That's four of the nobles taken care of, and honestly, I'm really proud of Pichu. At the start of this challenge, I thought there was a good chance we wouldn't even make it this far. Give not into sorrow, give not into anger, offer only the cuteness of Pichu. Well said. You're truly part of the Survey Corps and Jubilife Village now. <laughs> just as planned. What was that? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. Kamado gives us our orders to investigate the Alabaster Icelands and quell the final noble lord. But Akari stops us at the gate for a rematch, and now she's got three Pokemon, but our Pichu is in a league above her at this point. An agile Iron Tail slaps Mr. Mime, with a Thunderbolt frying the Star Avia that follows. Last is Pikachu, but its Iron Tail isn't enough to overpower Pichu. With a quick attack, followed by a strong style play rough, Pichu slaps Pikachu around, once and for all establishing who the real Pokemon mascot should be. Ah, I love the snow. And the best part is, there shouldn't be any ground types here. Spoiler, there is. <sighs> After a short stroll across the ice, we meet this living Giga Chad. Garrick uses two Ice-type Pokemon, so this fight shouldn't be too complicated. A few Iron Tails from Pichu crushes his Pokemon down to Ice Cubes very quickly, but Garrick isn't going to roll over that easily. On what grounds do you come here seeking to quell Lord Avalug? On the grounds I was told to by my boss? This leads to my next question. What is wrong with him being frenzied? Look dude, I'm a kid paid in potato mochi. Just let me do my job so I don't starve. To quell Avalug, we'll need the 
eternal ice that can only be reached by flying on Braviary. So next we head to Snowpoint Temple in search of its warden, Sabi. These doors in Snowpoint Temple would normally be hard to open, but Pichu's so adorable that the doors just fly open before his cute gaze. Once we reach the top of the temple, Sabi's waiting and this battle is ridiculous. It's a three on one against some powerhouse Pokemon, including a ground type. I have to take out the Rhyperia first, so take advantage of its secondary rock type by hitting it with a super effective Iron Tail, luckily taking it down in one shot. Electivire and Magmorta then both get two attacks each, leaving Pichu battered, bruised, and poisoned on the brink of death. However, I've now got two turns of my own. I use the first to Thunderbolt Magmorta for a quick KO. Pichu just survives the poison damage, and with its last remaining strength, a strong style play rough can finish Electivire, giving us the win on our very first try. This clears us to demonstrate our strength to Braviary in battle. I was feeling very confident and didn't even bother healing up after our last battle. It's a bird, I have a walking thunderbolt, the result is pretty predictable. Pichu and I give another Grammy deserving performance before taking flight with Braviary. We grab the Eternal Ice, which is supposedly Avalug's favorite snack. Like really, ice is its favorite food? That's so lame. Under the moonlight, now it was time to face the final noble lord Avalog. This guy is huge and it definitely has the size advantage over Pichu. This boss fight is usually pretty easy if you know the attack patterns, but I was failing hard. I kept getting hit and every time I tried to send Pichu out to battle, I didn't throw the ball far enough. So Pichu got to sit on the bench, which is probably for the best considering that Avalug could turn Pichu into a pancake with a single step. Avalug had me at one hit from death, but being the pro that I am, I leaned forward in my gamer chair and dodged the remainder of its attacks, smacking it with a final few bombs to give us a clutch win. With that, the final noble lord had been quelled. Is this Keegan boy some kind of monster in disguise? Wait, how did you know? Uh, I mean, of course not. And now that all the noble lords had been quelled, peace can finally return. Well, not if I have anything to say about it. Pichu, it's time to initiate the plan. The first strike of that strange lightning, the one that drove Cleavor into a frenzy. It struck the night that Keegan fell from the sky, did it not? Those events must be linked. Who or what are you really, Keegan? Ha ha ha, so you finally figured it out, Kamado. You fools. This whole mess started with a lightning strike. And who has the strongest lightning strike? That's right, Pichu. You all fell for it, and I've already collected most of the elemental plates. Once I get them all, I'll capture Arceus and use its power to give Pichu its rightful place as the mascot Pokemon, not Pikachu. My god, you're insane! Keegan, you are no longer welcome in the galaxy team. Consider yourself banished. Ha! <laughs> I don't need you anymore, Kamado. I'm out of here. Well, Pichu, I guess we don't need to wear these disguises anymore. Ah, that's better. Now we can finally see your true form, Pichu. So, we're finally ready for the next stage of the plan? That's right, partner. The next step in my plan is to assemble the red chain. This isn't too difficult. It does involve some one-on-one -on -one battles with strong Pokemon, but we have a demonic Pichu who makes light work of the Guardian Pokemon. The Lake Trio can't deny Pichu's cuteness and hand over the red chain that we intend to use to control the gods. Now we have to take the chain up to Spear Pillar, but on the way, we encounter a problem. Benny intends to stop my plan and his team is easily the toughest yet. He's got four Pokemon, all fully evolved, all strong, and all capable of crushing Pichu. On my first attempt, I barely got past his first Pokemon, Miss Magius. And even then, the Sneasel that followed ripped me to shreds. Level 76 just wasn't going to cut it, and neither was level 85, where the result was the exact same. If we wanted a shot at Benny, Pichu would need to max out its potential at level 100. In my mind, I truly believed that a Pokemon as frail as Pichu couldn't possibly stand a chance against a full team of four, especially with a new battle system in Legends Arceus. I've had some incredibly hard fights in this run that took hours, so how long would this one take? Well, only 15 minutes later, I hit some crazy luck. On turn one, I hit a thunder, which brings Miss Magius into the red, while also paralyzing it. Benny uses a max potion to heal up, but the next thunder I landed was a critical hit, finishing Miss Magius off. Next is Sneasler, who previously would finish me off. However, in this run, since I'm still at full health, Pichu somehow survives a close combat. 
Sneasler is already pretty frail, but with close combat lowering its defenses further, it makes Sneasler very frail, but still bulkier than Pichu. So I take advantage of this by weakening Sneasler with an agile quick attack. This means that I can finish Sneasler off with a regular quick attack while also giving me another consecutive attack. Benny sends out Gardevoir next, but I can take that down with one Iron Tail. I'd been so lucky to make it this far, but Benny still had his Gallade left and Pichu can't survive an attack. So surely the attempt ends here. Or not. For whatever reason, the AI used Swords Dance, and on the next turn, one strong style play rough was enough to rip Gallade apart, giving us a crazy lucky win. Everything went my way in that fight, and I was ecstatic since Benny has been a problem in the past. Pichu actually did it, but a few steps up the mountain, our next challenge is waiting, and this one is even tougher, Kamado. I can get past Braviary easily with Thunderbolt, but Kamado follows up with Snorlax, who knows high horsepower, a ground-type move that slaps Pichu into the ground. All of my early attempts simply died here since I didn't have a way of dealing with Snorlax. So I decided to experiment. I found that if I use Charge Beam against Braviary, I fall just short of knocking it out. But if I use a quick attack after Benny heals, this means that when my next turn rolls around, I can get two attacks in a row. The first can be used to finish Braviary, and the second can be directed at Snorlax. This is important because even though I can't one-shot the Snorlax, I can try to paralyze it with Thunderbolt, and if it's unable to move for a turn, only then would I have a chance of taking it out. I spent hours trying, so many attempts, but for this to work, I needed so much to go in my favor and it just wasn't happening. And all of this was only to make it past Kamado's second Pokemon. He still had two more in the back with one of them being a ground type. Eventually, I realized that if I wanted to stand any chance of winning, I would need to whip out some items to level the playing field. But by no means does this make the fight easy. I was still being decimated by Kamado, although I did start to see some progress until this happened. Turn 1, I set up an Orcs Evasion, and Braviary connects an Esper Wing for solid damage. On the next turn, I set up an Orcs Power Guard, and thankfully, Braviary missed its attack this time, allowing me to finish it off with an Agile Thunderbolt. Next is Kamado Snorlax, who crucially missed its high horsepower. Thanks to my attack boost, an Agile Quick Attack, followed by a Thunder, is just enough to take Snorlax out. This brings Golem out, who immediately slaps Pichu with Stealth Rock, which does gradual damage in this game. But I return fire with a super effective Agile Iron Tail to crush that boulder in just one shot. Last is Kamado's Clefable, and for some strange reason, it set up a Calm Mind rather than taking an easy KO. With that stroke of luck, and Pichu being on the brink of death, a quick attack, followed by a strong style Iron Tail, is just enough to finish Clefable, finally giving Pichu the win over Kamado after hours of trying. Our little Pichu somehow managed to beat not one, but two teams of four strong Pokemon. I honestly didn't think we'd make it this far, but Pichu really pulled through. Kamado bows down, acknowledging Pichu's monstrous power and pledging his allegiance. Now we're clear to head for the summit, where Palkia is summoned and the red chain just breaks. Cool. Regardless, Pichu overpowers Palkia, forcing it into submission, and we shove it inside a Pokeball. Dialga emerges next, wanting to witness Pichu's cuteness with its own eyes. But we retreat since Pichu's not exactly in the best shape after those battles. There's a whole side quest about crafting the Origin Ball that does involve a battle with Charm, but her team only has the same two Pokemon as when we last battled, so Pichu takes care of it pretty quickly. Once we've got our hands on the Origin Ball, it's back up to Spear Pillar for a showdown with Dialga. Honestly, this fight is a breeze. Dialga must have been stunned by how adorable Pichu is, because I danced around Dialga like it was nothing without even needing the demonic power of Pichu. We caught it in the Origin Ball, and my plan was going to perfection. He actually caught it? What a monster! That Pichu is the devil! We had the God of Time, the God of Space, and the God of Cuteness all together. The only thing left to do was collect the remaining elemental plates with Volo before confronting Arceus. The next plate is very simple. We just need to defeat an Alpha Vespaquen. Thankfully, a Thunder from Pichu handles this very quickly, frying its brain into a gentle goo. But the next plate is a very different story because Kamado has it. I tried to sneak up and push him into the ocean, but that didn't work, so we need to battle Kamado again. 
and this time, his team is a higher level, along with having an extra Pokemon. It took me so long to beat him the first time, so I was dreading this battle. Now he leads with Golem, who I can take out with an Iron Tail, but then Kamado follows up with his Snorlax, and it's a familiar sight, with high horsepower tearing me to shreds. I'd fallen back into the depths of RNG hell. My strategy was to set up an Orcs Evasion on turn 1, and I need Golem to miss. If it doesn't, the attempt dies right there to a Bulldoze. A lot of attempts ended here. But if Golem does miss, on the following turn, I can also set up an Orcs Power Guard. I then needed to land an Agile Iron Tail, which has a 25% chance to miss. If it connects, Golem goes down and the big bad bear emerges. This is where the RNG gets even worse, because now I needed Snorlax to miss enough attacks in a row for me to take it out. If it lands a single high horsepower, the attempt is done. This requires some crazy luck, and keep in mind, all of this is to only make it past Kamado's first two Pokemon. He still has three more after that. I spent hours failing over and over and over, but I believed in our little Pichu and kept on fighting until the stars aligned. Against Golem, I'm able to set up an Orcs Evasion and Power Guard with it missing its Bulldoze. I take it out with an Agile Iron Tail, bringing the Reaper out. We both miss our attacks, but on the following turn, an Agile Thunder, followed by Iron Tail, is enough to slay the gluttonous beast. A Pin Missile and Close Combat from Heracross does huge damage to Pichu, but fortunately, neither of them crit, so I just hang on. With the Defense Drop on Heracross from Close Combat, an Agile Play Rough is enough to take it out. Now I'm in a tough spot, because my boosts have worn off, and Pichu is about to die from residual pin missile damage. So I heal Pichu with a max potion and get really lucky as Clefable decided to set up a Calm Mind. I use this extra turn to give Pichu another Orc's Power Guard, allowing me to tank Clefable's Psychic pretty well. After healing up with a Hyper Potion and tanking one more attack, I tried to finish Clefable off with Iron Tail, but missed! Ah! Now Pichu's at low health and things are looking rough. However, Clefable's Calm Mind boost has now worn off. So I take the chance and try to land an Agile Iron Tail, which thankfully connects this time and just manages to finish Clefable. Kamado was now down to only his Braviary, but since I just used an Agile style move, I've got one more turn. I pray to Iron Jesus and thank God my strong style Thunder doesn't miss, smiting Braviary in one shot and we finally beat Kamado again. Kamado hands me the Fist Plate, acutely named after what he just did to me for the last three hours. Fortunately, the remaining plates are much less painful. We travel around collecting a ton of legendary Pokemon, who all fall under the spell of Pichu's cuteness. Wow, those are some powerful Pokemon. Let's release them. You're the only Pokemon I need, Pichu. We get the next plate by giving Koggy to some wood, before Volo and I head for Spear Pillar. Finally, Volo, we can execute the last stage of our plan to make Pichu become the Pokemon mascot. Pichu? That ugly Pokemon? Volo, what are you saying? Hand over the plates, Keegan. I'll carry out the plan, but I'll be making a much more deserving Pokemon the mascot. And what Pokemon would that be? Paris. My god, Volo, you're a madman. You'll doom us all. Someone had to stop Volo. It was all up to me and my little Pichu. This battle is ridiculous. Not only is it a 1 versus 8, but Volo also has some of the strongest Pokemon in the entire game, including a legendary Pokemon that we have to beat twice. It's absurd to think that one little Pichu had any hope of beating this all by itself. Remember how Pichu has a stat total of 205? Well, the total base stats of Volo's team comes out to a crazy 4,585, or the equivalent of over 22 Pichus, and we only have one. But we've come too far to give up here. I had to find a way to make this possible. So I experimented with a bunch of different strategies and movesets. But time and time again, I got slapped around. I'm talking for hours. But this was important to help me understand just how screwed I was and how lucky I needed to be. So Volo Spiritum lead is not that bad. I can set up an Orcs Power Guard and Orcs Evasion pretty safely as long as I don't get crit. Thanks to the attack boost, a super effective, agile play rough can then take it down. Of course, next is my worst nightmare, a ground type. If Garchomp uses earth power and it doesn't miss, then Pichu just dies then and there. The only attempts that stand a chance are those where Garchomp misses or uses slash. If either of those happen, then I can take it down with a play rough. But it doesn't get easier because next up is Lucario. This part of the fight is tricky because I can take Lucario down with Thunderbolt, but by this point in the fight, 
my stat buffs have nearly worn off, and I desperately need those boosts to stand any chance of making it past Roserade that comes out next. So the strategy I eventually settled on was to try and use Lucario to restore my stat buffs and health. Of course, this requires a ton of luck. Basically, I need Lucario to miss at least three attacks. If it crits me, I lose. If it never misses, I also lose. It's a gauntlet, but it is necessary, because if I don't have full health and my stat buffs, the rest of the fight is near impossible. On the very few attempts that do make it this far, after taking Lucario down, Volo sends out his plant, who is an absolute run killer. If it hits me with spikes, Pichu takes huge residual damage each turn and will almost always lose. Seriously, so many good attempts died right here. To make it safely past Roserade, I need it to miss an attack. If it does, then I've got a 75% chance to take it down in one shot with an agile Iron Tail. If absolutely all of this has gone to plan, we should be at full health when Arcanine comes out. Once again, I need it to miss an attack or the attempt is over. If it does miss, then I can knock it out with a thunder. This brings out the last member of Volo's regular team, Togekiss. It's worth mentioning that I must be at full health when I take it down if I want any hope of surviving Giratina. This means I either need Togekiss to use Calm Mind when it first comes out, or I I have to keep on healing until it finally misses an attack. Once I'm at full health and have a chance to attack, it only takes one strong style thunder to take care of Togekiss. By now, I must have had hundreds of attempts over several hours to finally get all the luck needed to beat Volo's main team. But then, this hacker whips out his Giratina that I'll need to beat twice. Giratina attacks first and instantly brings Pichu to the brink of death with Shadow Force. But now I've got two turns, so I use the first one to heal and an Orc's Power Guard on the second. Giratina is still doing huge damage. All I can do is try to stall for time by healing, but this is hopeless. If Giratina crits me, I die. If Giratina hits me with an Agile Dragon Claw, followed by a Strong Style Earth Power, I also die. And this is all without me even getting to land an attack. After helplessly falling to Giratina, I was crushed. It took me so long to even make it that far, only to get stomped without dealing a single point of damage. But I kept fighting. It took ages, but I eventually did make it back to Giratina. I survived for a little while, but the result was the exact same. By the third time I made it to Giratina, Pichu still hadn't even laid a hand on it. And all of these Giratina fights have hours of failed attempts between them that die in the absolute hell of RNG that is Volo's regular Pokemon. And if I sound hopeless, it's because at this point, that's exactly how I felt. Until something special happened. Once again, we were back at Giratina. As always, we almost died a Shadow Force, but Pichu hangs on and we heal up before boosting our stats with an Orc's Power Guard. I then keep healing until we eventually get two consecutive turns, and I use this turn to set up an Orc's Evasion. This triggers Giratina to now use Aura Sphere since that move doesn't miss. This does less damage than Shadow Force, and I can survive two regular hits. So I alternate between healing and restoring my stat boosts with Orcs items. This cycle carries on for a few turns, but the goal is to drain Giratina's Aura Sphere PP. Once it stops using Aura Sphere though, we know that we've done just that. Now it is vital that Giratina misses multiple turns, and this is where my previous runs faltered. But this time, Giratina missed a Shadow Force, so I was able to land an Agile Play Rough, doing about half of Giratina's health while also hitting the small chance to lower its attack stat. But then Giratina makes things even better and also misses a Dragon Claw, so I can reset my Orc's Power Guard buffs before landing another Agile Play Rough to finally KO Giratina. At least before before it comes back in its second form. However, importantly, stat changes from the first phase carry over, so I get to keep my stat buffs and Giratina is still stuck with the attack drop. With its PP reset, Giratina once again uses Aura Sphere and I respond with yet another play rough. I dodge a crit on the next turn and barely survive thanks entirely to the stat buffs. At this point, Giratina's evasion has been raised by Shadow Force and play rough only has a 90% accuracy. All the hours, all the struggle, all the tough fights we've had all come down to whether we can land one final attack. 
And we did. After way too long and hundreds of attempts, our little Pichu, one of the most frail Pokemon in the game, had somehow soloed one of the hardest battles in the entire Pokemon franchise. And so, we stepped up to Arceus, who was no match for Pichu's cute charm. We slapped it around and took control of Arceus's power, which we used to change history, and that's how Pichu became the rightful mascot of the Pokemon franchise. Thanks for watching! Jump into this video next or Pichu will smite you. Like the video for more cute Pichu content and leave an F in the comments because this challenge made me lose my mind. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.